Hey! Starting with Angular version 16.1, we can now transform data using the Input Decorator. What does that do for us? Let's take a look. We use the Input Decorator to define an input property. An input property allows us to specify a property in a child component that can receive a value from a parent component. Here we have a child component with a selector of PM product detail. We use the input decorator to define an input property called product. The child component expects to receive a value for this property so it can display that product's detail. And here is the parent component's template. We pull in the child component using its selector. The child component template will appear here for each product in the array. The parent passes data to a child component by binding to its input properties. In this example, the parent binds the child component's product input property to P, which represents each product. The result appears like this, a child component for each product displaying that product's detail. As of Angular version 16, we can also use an input property to read route parameters from the URL. This code is from a different example that uses routing instead of a parent-child design. In a component, we use the input decorator to define an input property. The route parameter is automatically read into this property. Nice! I did a video specifically about reading route parameters using input properties. You can find that video here. The Input Decorator provides three additional feature options for our input properties. Alias, Required, which is new in Angular v16, and Transform, which is new in Angular v16.1. I'll briefly cover the first two, then focus on data transformation. When using the Input Decorator, we need a way to match up our child input property to its parent bound property, or route parameter. One way to do that is using the input property name. In this example, we set the input property name to the exact same name used in the binding. But we don't have to. We could instead set the input property name to something else. Let's add a second input property, display detail. The parent component binds using that name, but it's kind of a longish name. Let's change the input property to a shorter name. But that doesn't work. Angular's binding has no way to match up the bound property here with the input property here. What we need is an alias. We add the alias as an argument to the input decorator. Angular can then match up the binding with the appropriate input property. The syntax is actually a shortcut. The long form looks like this. Here we pass an object into the input decorator and set the alias property. Use the short form if the alias is the only option you need. Use the longer form if you plan to use other input decorator options. Let's move on to the required option. What do you think will happen if the parent component forgets to bind to the child component input properties? There won't be an error Instead, the child component will just use its initial values. For the display detail, that's probably okay. It's initialized to true, but the product property is initialized to null, so nothing will display. Get where I'm going with this? You can use the required option to mark an important input property. The parent component must then provide a value for that input. If the parent component does not provide a value, Angular generates an error. Required input product from component product detail component must be specified. That way our child component won't silently fail. So that's the required option. Lastly, let's look at the transform option. Using transform, we define a transformation function. That function takes the value passed in by the parent component and modifies it to something else for use in the child component. Say that our users like that 1990s look, so here we take the image title string and transform it to uppercase. Here's another example. 
The child component gets product data from the parent component. That child component wants to display the product name in uppercase. We do that again with a transform function. In this example, we want to ensure the parent component provides the product data, so we set the required option to true. Then we set the transform option to a function that returns a product object. This function takes the passed in product, uses the spread operator to make a copy of that product, and modifies the product name to uppercase. Use the transform option to perform any type of data transformation on the provided value before it's assigned to the input property. If you'd rather create a reusable transform function, you can define it as an exported JavaScript function. Then set the transform property to the name of that function. Instead of creating a custom transform function, we could use one of Angular's built-in transform functions. Two of the built-in transform functions are Boolean attribute and number attribute. As the names imply, the Boolean attribute transforms a string to a Boolean value, true or false, and the number attribute transforms a string to a numeric value. The Boolean attribute is especially useful if you want your input properties to work like HTML Boolean attributes. What does that mean? In HTML, a Boolean attribute is true if it is present, otherwise it's false. For example, an input element is disabled using an HTML Boolean attribute as shown here. If we wanted to create a Boolean input property, previously we would need to use binding. For the include image input property, we'd like to work with it like an HTML Boolean attribute, but the parent component had to instead bind to the child component's input property and assign a value of true or false. But not anymore. By using the built-in Boolean attribute transform function, we can now use HTML Boolean attribute syntax. When the attribute is present, the value is true. If the attribute is not present, the value is false. Cool! Notice the input property declaration. As of this recording, for the Angular compiler to work correctly, the type of the input property must be string or Boolean. That's because Angular interprets all static attributes, such as our include image attribute, as a string. So the incoming value is a string. And with the Boolean attribute transform function, that string is transformed to a Boolean. We use the built-in number attribute transform function to support HTML attributes. That way, the parent component has the option to use standard input binding or use an HTML attribute for a numeric value. The number attribute is also useful when reading route parameters. We use it to transform a route parameter, which is always a string, to a numeric value to use in the component. Let's see these features in some project code. Here is my product detail component. I have several input properties, some of which include commented out alternatives. The product property is required and transforms the product name to uppercase. Or we could instead create a reusable function and assign it as the transform function as shown here. Scrolling up. For the display detail input property, we want to use a different name in the component code, so we use an alias. The parent component will bind to display detail, but we name the input property detail. We could use the shorthand syntax as shown here, or set the alias property as shown here. The image width is a numeric input property. We want to support standard HTML syntax in addition to binding, so we use the built-in number attribute transform function. The include image is a Boolean input property. We want to support the HTML Boolean attribute syntax, where the presence of the attribute means true, otherwise false. So we add the built-in Boolean attribute transform function and define the appropriate input property type. The image title is a string, and we transform it to uppercase. Here is my product component template. If I remove all of the bindings, we see an error because our product property is marked as required. I'll undo that. Notice the include image doesn't require binding, 
Because we use the Boolean attribute, just the presence of the attribute implies that the value is true. And because we've used a number attribute transform function, we can set the image width either using binding like this, or as an HTML attribute like this. You can find the link to this code in the notes for this video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.